Boys, just got out of the old mail. We have Jules from France, Tosh from California. Not just because you guys got a good reputation, but you surf really impressive out there. And it's by no coincidence that you had some of the best boards. So Jules has got a midget Farrelly and a stringerless. This board has rails, which are unlike some of the others made in Australia at the time. This one's made in probably very early 1967, because it's a stringerless for blanks in Australia. We did have stringless right through the, the mid 60s and early 60s, but they, they didn't hold up. So you, you wouldn't see a well-written example of a stringless board, especially one that's sunburnt, because they would have bent and twisted over the years. But as the 60s went on, Midget was actually one of the one of the best uh, craftsmen in Australia at the time. And just the shape of these rails, uh, the bottom contour was slight roll, and the rocker overall is actually a very reasonable outline, and you could probably draw a lot of comparisons to some of your Thomases that you guys are yeah, writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The neutral rocker, would I be right in saying that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It kind of has that nice flow of thing. And obviously, a lot of the time back then, the guys are running flat and a little bit of roll behind the fins. Um, Californians, yeah, Californian influence hard. and stuff with the spoons and all the um, the hulls. Uh, this straight area back here with the fins slightly pushed forward, mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of acceleration and a lot of drive in this last portion behind the fin, as opposed to uh, this, this shape over here where we've got a Scott Dillon, Glenn Ritchie, this is a more of a conventional Australian shape with the, fin, the fins back a little more and you've got it right over the tail. Um, and that's an example of like the classic involvement style surfboard. Where well, this here is the very beginning of that shortboard revolution. Some V-bottom aspects, some transitional aspects. We've got a really long raked back fin. Very unusual shape. You don't see this shape very often on these boards. But one of the coolest things are the little accentuated um, knee patches got the Farrelly logo, which is super cool. This is the Palm Beach logo, shaped at where my buddy's family live now, the Gonzales Boat Shed. Um, this is where Midget was shaping back then. That's their PO Box, Palm Beach, New South Wales, and the pinnacle of Australian surfboard design. And Jules, you surfed it amazing out there. Thank you so much, Mark. And this Glenn Ritchie. Glenn was a surfer shaper from Manly in Australia. He was a bigger framed goofy footer, and he had a really cool style. Um, Probably the best thing about Glenn Ritchie's style, like how you were surfing out there, Tosh, Glenn surfed the pocket really well. He in and around the pocket, so talking that involvement style surfing, rocking it from up off the top, you did a little roller coaster in that yeah, heat. Yeah, 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 I did. Tell us what the board felt like in that. Um, the board, it's pretty trippy, honestly. It's uh, kind of a bigger board for me, or just how much it weighed and such, but the it kind of just is super fluid. It's super rolly, like you can feel the roll. When yeah. you go to do a turn, it rolls at first, and then it'll start catching rail if you're going too much. But if you can like perfectly time it in the pocket and roll it, yeah. it like will go immediately. Projects pop. forward exactly, and pops yeah. forward, and every step forward's fast, huh? Yeah, exactly. So it just goes like keeps its that And yeah. on the East Coast Saxon, obviously speed is very important. Yeah, it, it's cool because we don't really come across boards like this as often. But they would yeah. work in your way. Oh, dude, they would work better than the boards. Yeah, you know, they, our boards are just a lot wider and stuff. I've, what are the nose? What's the difference in the nose shapes to, to the classic '60s boards you guys? Well, see? I do like so. My, I have like one of Gary Proper's old boards, yeah. and it's it says nine L on the bottom, but it's eight ten actually. And so Gary Proper was like the midget Farrelly yeah, of the East Coast. The East Coast, Coast kind yeah. of he like was what was kind of starting that trend, of going shorter, yeah, getting more radical and so forth. But it's a V bottom, yeah. So it's instead of the whole rolly concept and stuff, we like just went straight to V. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's cool. It's just a lot wider, a lot fuller and stuff. And yeah. Kind of looks more like a modern day nose rider. A lot thicker rails, sure. not as pinched out. Not as pinched out. This barrel no. is very pinched out. Yeah, considering, I can, huh? Dude, I couldn't believe it. It's no. so beautiful. It's like an eggy pinch, though. It's kind of got, like, you were surfing stable jewels, but at the same time, you had enough of that uh, pinch in the rail to, to, to slice yeah. and drive off. You know, it wasn't just like a, a blob. Mm. Kind of had some shape to the rail as well. So you see the contrast in the fins. These boards are made probably within six months of yeah. each other right in the same town, so about 15 kilometers, Brookvale and Palm Beach wow. uh, in Sydney, which at the time was the hotbed for surfboard performance and evolution in Australia, right up until the 80s. And there's no coincidence that there is more world champions between Manly and Palm Beach and that peninsula than any other place in the world. That's all because of that surfboard industry in the 60s. And here we are at Noosa Festival. We've got the Groms reliving the 60s dream and these boards are more relevant than ever. Yeah. Dude, I'm here to stay on this board.
It's beautiful. Such a nice yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. The nose is the weirdest part. This is like a perfect nose. Yeah, right. it's great. It's really like that size. Yeah. That whole outline of this board. Is this is kind of beefy, so it's. It is a beefy board. Yeah. That Glenn yeah, Ritchie logo so there. Yeah, but it, Tosh, it might be beefy, but the outline's there, huh? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Probably like a production board made for a um, a shop or something, you know? It almost looks like it. Where all the midgets, midgets were all shaped with, so they, every single midget I've ever seen is shaped with performance in mind. It's if like, you know, every 40 touch he had in mind, like the best kind of surfing. Yeah. Um, production, yeah, he did heaps, but you never see any like yeah. really proportionally bad surfboards. Yeah. That's why they, they are like the holy grail. I mean, people talk about the Haydens up here on the Sunshine Coast and the Keos. I love the Keos for sure. I'm very fond of the Keos. But yeah, yeah the, the Farrelly's are uh, right on. And you see Midget's performance at, you know, the Hot Generation. <coughs> oh, it sells. Mm -hmm. Incredible, right? Like, yeah, it's insane. He is just like so explosive. Um, it's crazy. And you know that fat boy fin that a lot of the guys use in the 90s where yeah. they got the the big bulbous tip and they've got a narrow base they kind of go like that that was midget style fin that he was doing when everyone was doing greeno style wide base and thin tip he was doing narrow base and a thick tip so that's how i try to get my fin foil the thing that i yep. yeah i wanted to fin it like a little foil yeah yeah yep. but his out outline was actually a bulb on the end and a narrow base yeah. very unusual and, uh, i have a gns similar to that as well. This fin, oh, I mean, like, rake-wise, it would be a 13 inch fin, but upright, well, you can see it's actually been, like, driven into the ground a bit, too. It'd probably be, you know, it'd be 10, 10 inches high, yeah. but it'd be a 13 About, inch yeah, 13 sort of rake inch, back. Yeah. Now, my first, I didn't even look at the fin, and Jules let me catch one pre surfing my first wave. I yep. did a turn, and it was just, like, so fluid, how it, like, couldn't even believe it, you know, yeah. no pivot at all, it's all... And all these on fins are flexed here. out too. Yeah. Like I have a couple of old males where the, the whole fin flexes. Yeah. This thing's actually reasonable. It's been cared for really well. No, um, this is a really nice for I want to ride this tomorrow. <laughs> no, I wanted to wave, yeah. Yeah. Take it in the coins. So. Let's do it tomorrow. We'll go for a free surf. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah. yeah. More of a wave. Yeah. Is there supposed to be more of a bump tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right, boys. Thank you. Thanks for dropping some knowledge as always, Matt. Thanks for coming to Oz. Yeah. Thanks, boys. You never miss out.